probably up to the mix. I don't know. He has a nine o'clock mix there. Today we're going to St. Savior's Parish for a pastoral visit. We have Mass at 10 and 11.30, and then we have afterwards a meeting with the Pastoral Council, Finance Council, and the leaders of the parish. Grocery store do you go to? Oh, I was down in the Metropolitan area for the um, Italian bakery there. Oh, okay. And, uh, today uh, we're speaking about the gospel for the most part, where um, the leper asked Jesus to heal him if he, if he would, if he, if he would make me clean. And uh, bringing examples today of uh, two people that work with lepers, uh, uh, Blessed Damien of Molokai, who was going to be uh, canonized a saint this year sometime, and Mother Teresa. And uh, just two examples of modern people that have reached out to lepers. And there's all kinds of incurable diseases today, leprosies of different types and shapes yeah. that people kind of shy away from. And we need the example of some of the heroes of the past that you know went beyond the, the limits of what people thought they should do and reached out to people really in need. So I think that's basically the theme of the homily today. Being in the press of New York is not a good thing. <laughs> Low profile, much better. How do you handle it all? Not well. <laughs> well, you know, there was this one article they did on indulgences in the New York Times, and I just gave two quotes, two, two sentences. You should have seen the 64 comments on the blog piece. I couldn't believe some of them. Such negativity towards the church, I just can't believe it. But that's what people think. The article was fairly good. But I don't think we're understood. And for you, child, it would just be those in the sanctuary. My pleasure to be with you today on this pastoral visit to St. Savior's Parish. Today, as we listen to the gospel, we will see how Jesus cures a leper. He gives him a new time to live, a different way to live. Each time we come to the Eucharist, we ask for the same thing, that the Lord will heal us, give us a new chance to begin our lives over again. And so we pause and call to mind our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. Last week, I made my annual spiritual retreat. Each priest and every bishop should take a week, a year, to take a special time of prayer and renewal. Well, in that retreat house, there was a holy water font, some, a one, a font that I had never seen before because it had an inscription on it. And what it said was, in Latin, Domine si vis potus me mundare, which are the words of today's gospel. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. I really liked holy water fonts, especially when children are blessing themselves. You know, one thing that children like, and I'm sure all of you agree, is water in all kinds of shapes and forms. And when you see little children trying to get their hand in the, in the font and blessing themselves, sometimes not very well, but they're trying. And you know, maybe the children like to do that because what holy water is, is a reminder of our baptism. 
and most of them have, are closer to the baptism than us old people. Maybe they know that that water did something special. The water of baptism truly makes us clean from what we call original sin. Today's gospel is a lesson that Jesus taught about being made clean, not just from physical illness, but also from spiritual illness. Today, as we return to the altar, Jesus promises to make us clean. He gives us his body and blood to help us be better. Some of the saints call the Eucharist a medicine, the medicine of the soul, because it allows us to come before God clean, ready to receive all the help God wants to give us. So today, let us make our prayer the prayer of that leper. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. We know we believe that, and we pray today that the Lord indeed will cleanse us of our faults and sins and give us a new heart and a new spirit to be open to others. Thank you, very good. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Fortunately for St. Saviors, it's a holiday weekend, and we don't have our School of Religion, which our School of Religion begins with the Family Mass at 10, and then we have religion from 11 to 12.30, and it's suspended today because of the holiday weekend. So there were fewer families, fewer children than usual. Usually this Mass is packed. But other than that, I thought it was wonderful. The bishop was great with the children, and the children were themselves. They were just the way they always are. Well, it was very beautiful. This is a family mass. The children really have a beautiful choir. 
including a violin, and uh, so, so, it's so wonderful. And uh, they, they do the lecturing, two different lectors, and um, they're there. Obviously very much involved, so I, and I could see that the children are really involved, even to the point of having their own collection at the end, which brought everybody out of the pews, the smallest ones came up with something. In fact, even somebody wanted to give me a donation, which I refused and said, I put it in the basket. <laughs> but it's a very, very nice place. What I've been doing is every morning, very early every morning, I record a homily based on the scripture readings of that day's Mass, and I deliberately set the machine to cut off at three minutes so I don't go rambling on and on. I intended it for those who would be homebound and kind of shut in and not able to, to connect with Mass, but to my surprise and to my delight, a lot of people call. Uh, it isn't just the, those who were confined to home. A lot of people, they find it a little link in the busy day that they lead. A lot of people call from work, and they, they just said it's a connection. It makes them feel a little connected with God, and it's a little peaceful interlude in, in their day. And it's a 24-7, it's on mute, so we don't hear it. So they call it all the finales. Well, I think Father Murphy's got some good talent, and uh, that's a, an innovative idea. Um, I, was, it's, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we should think of all new ideas. The internet is the next frontier where we need to be on there, uh, being available to people. That's where young people today especially uh, do um, get their information. So we have to be innovative, I think, in new ways. Well, I think the community's changed over time. Again, it was a, a solid uh, middle-class neighborhood. Then it was a little bit, bit in decline, and now it's come back again, uh, where we've got uh, many of the professional people who work in New York who have been living in the neighborhood. So it, um, it's, a, I think, a very stable parish at this point. Uh, and one of the nicer parishes in Park Slope, beautiful church and school, high school for girls there. So it's a rather stable situation. Well, I guess uh, parishes have to adapt to the neighborhood. You, you don't do the same things when you have different people of a different economic class or different abilities. So you have to be flexible in, in meeting the needs of people uh, pastorally. Always the liturgy is the same, but again, other things would be different depending on who is in the parish.